Welcome to Burke Makes Stuff. My name is Andrew Burke, and I'm so thankful that you guys are here with me today. Knowing how precious space can be in a tiny workshop and a tiny craft space, today I'm gonna to show you how to build a fold-away craft table that when you're not using it, folds almost flat against the wall, so it saves you a ton of room and a little bit of built-in storage. Let's do it right now. Welcome to Burke Makes Stuff. So for today's build, we're gonna be back and forth between two main spaces in my house. First of all, of course, we're gonna spend a bunch of time in the shop doing the cutting and measuring and all that stuff. And the second one is this space. This is our craft room. It used to be an office for my wife, but she doesn't use it anymore, so we decided to make it a lot more functional for things that we do. For myself, I'm gonna add all my vinyl stuff in here, and for her, she's gonna bring all her crocheting. As you can tell, the lighting and sound in here are absolutely atrocious, so we'll have to figure that out at some later time, but it shouldn't affect the build at all, so let's hop right in. Knowing I wanted this folding workstation to be at desk height, I measured 30 inches up off the floor, gave myself some marks, and used a level to give myself a good reference line. I then made sure to take a measurement of the space itself so I knew exactly what I'd have to cut for the frame, and this space right here is exactly 31 inches. I then tried to find a 2x4 to use for this, which I found up in one of my wood stores, and cut it to 28 inches. Now the reason I cut it to 28 inches is because I'm leaving an inch and a half gap on either side for the corresponding frame piece that will be built directly onto the drop-down table, but you'll see that as we get to it later. I marked in that inch and a half gap on either side of the wall itself, checked to make sure the wood fit, which of course it did, and then set out finding all the studs in the wall using my stud finder. Tell me about it, stud. Once I had all of those figured out, I transcribed the measurements onto my piece of wood so I could pre-drill before attaching it to the wall using three inch construction screws. I also highly recommend at this point throwing a level on the top of this to make sure it's perfect because this will dictate if your tabletop is level as well. And of course my supervisor came out to check to make sure the job was being done right. I cut this piece of 3 quarter inch thick hard maple butcher block to 13 inches deep by 31 inches wide. That way when we have it set up, the fold away desk will be 13 inches deep when open and 31 inches wide being perfect for our space. While I'm not exactly sure how, my computer somehow ate a bit of the footage that I took. It's of me building the frame that goes underneath the fold down portion of the table. So I'm gonna reenact it for you now using tape. Why? Because I have tape and because you need that information. So uh, here we go. So what we're looking at here is the bottom of the fold up work surface. When it's right side up, that means that this will be the front and this will be the back that goes against the wall. I built the frame for underneath this desktop by cutting three lengths of three quarter inch thick by one and a half inch wide wood that I had left over from a past project and placed them here, here, and here. So these two one and a half inch pieces are what we accounted for when we removed the three inches from the two by four we affixed to the wall already. I then pre-drilled out holes along the entire border and countersunk each of those to receive screws. And after that, I just applied wood glue between the desktop and the frame pieces and then screwed all the pieces together. Once it was dry, it was time to sand the whole thing down just to break those sharp corners and make it smooth to the touch. So one of the things I've noticed is that as my beard grows, this respirator works worse and worse. If any of you guys have a beard, do me a favor in the comments below, just leave me what respirator you use because it's time for a new one and uh, this ain't cutting it. Beard life. Once you're done sanding, you're gonna take two long rectangles of wood and create two identical 45 degree isosceles trapezoids. What? Now obviously I'm gonna to wanna to show you what I'm talking about because that will make way more sense than all these words. So you start with two rectangular pieces of wood, in this case mine are 12 inches by three inches, and you're gonna make two 45 degree cuts like this creating a 45 degree isosceles trapezoid, or isosceles trapezium for my English friends on the other side of the pond. Now line up one of your trapezoids with the frame and where the bottom of the desktop will meet the wall. Then grab yourself a marker and make a line on the trapezoid piece, right where the edges meet. Next you're gonna sand that marker mark down to about 45 degree angle. That'll make room for the piano hinge we're gonna use later to attach the desktop to the two x four we've already fastened to the wall. Repeat that mirror imaged process on the other trapezoidal piece, and then to both I'll add hinges where the trapezoid piece meets the side of the frame. Be careful with what size screws you're using and how deep you pre-drill your holes, because on one side of the hinge you have up to an inch and a half to go, but on the trapezoidal piece you only have three quarters of an inch. And I might have made that mistake myself, so learn from my mistakes. 
He chose poorly. At this point, I also cut myself a length of piano hinge, which I salvaged from the destruction of a piano we did in a past video, which I'll link up above. Here you see how the trapezoid piece fits really nicely over it because we sanded that small portion off where it meets the hinge. Before we go install this in the craft room, there's one more thing I know we're going to need. If this piece of wood represents our fold-up desk, when it's folded up, we need something to stop it from falling down. So I mocked up this very primitive kind of latch thing. It's just a piece of wood with two holes drilled in it that'll be attached directly to the wall, and one piece that's drilled into its center that will act as the hinge so we can open and close the desk whenever we want. All right, let's go install our desk. First, I'm just gonna place our finished tabletop portion directly on the two x four that we already installed. And then I'm gonna attach the latch we made directly onto one of the studs of the wall. Once that's in place, it'll hold everything we need in place for the installation of the piano hinge. Now, since one side of the piano hinge is only going into three quarter inch thick piece of wood, I want to make sure and be really careful when I screw the 13 brass screws in, so I'm going to pre-drill everything. To make sure I didn't go too deep, I wrapped a piece of painter's tape at the right depth on the drill bit so I know where to stop. I'm really happy with how tight the fit is on all the pieces on the top of the desk. At this point, you want to make sure that you check to make sure the desk is level. And while mine was, I wasn't a big fan of the fit for the trapezoidal pieces and how they held against the wall. My fix for this was pretty simple. I took another length of wood that matched the size of our space and lined it up with where the wall supports met the wall. After making sure it was level, I then marked out those places and then took the piece of wood back to the shop, where I grabbed the Faustner bit just wider than the 3 quarter inch markings, drilled it out, used a chisel to clean it up, and by doing that what I basically did was create a very shallow channel for this to sit in that offers stability while still keeping the desk at a perfectly level height. I love functional builds like this. Now you'll notice that I didn't yet put stain or finish on it, and the reason for that is very, very simple. Your usage for this space and my usage for this space is going to be vastly different. If you're a painter and you're gonna get this wet and get paint all over it, you're gonna wanna finish it very differently than if it's just holding your yarn or you're just editing videos at the table. But you are gonna wanna finish it some way. So make sure to check in with either someone who knows or somebody at your local big box store. They can definitely help you out with what to use for that. If you're still here watching with us, and you haven't yet clicked subscribe, what are you waiting for? You either learn something really well or you're enjoying the video and it's entertaining. Both of those things are worth their weight in gold, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon next to it. That'll attach me to you and anytime I upload something new to the internet, the internet will let you know immediately. And it also helps the growth of this channel immensely. Every subscriber we get, every person that is told about it, every time you share this video with someone who likes it helps us so much. Stay right where you are and don't move a muscle because there's more Burke Make Stuff videos coming your way.